All right. So yeah, you had uh, CrowdStrike cause you problems. Tell us about it. Sure, sure. Let me let me give you a little bit of a uh, background. Um, I work for a, uh, a company that does software for real estate. Okay. Uh, we have a we have about five hundred users uh, spread across five different locations across the United States. Uh, the majority of our users work remotely. Um, uh, you know, some have a hybrid um, schedule where they'll, they'll come into the office, but there's many people in, in different states that aren't even, you know, near one of the locations. So, so yeah, it was, it was quite a challenge. Um, as you may have heard, there's a, a fix. Uh, that fix involves going into safe mode and deleting a uh, file from, uh, I believe it's like Windows, System32, Drivers, CrowdStrike. Now, the challenge, of course, oh, I should add a another uh, caveat. So our company also uses BitLocker. So that brings, that makes it a little bit more difficult. So, okay. um, yeah, it, it was very challenging because you have to read you know, the long, long bit locker key over, you know, uh, over Zoom and wow. uh, have them repeat that back. We ran into a couple issues where um, users didn't have admin rights to get into the CrowdStrike folder. And then there was one interesting issue with a Dell computer. Um, I think it was a, was it a, I think it was a latitude 55, 20 or 21 where the user was couldn't get into safe mode because when they went into the advanced uh, troubleshoot settings, safe mode wasn't showing up. So um, we, that user actually found the solution before I did. So that, that was kind of interesting. The solution to that was the Dell computer was in uh in the bios it was set to uh go to raid mode so you had to change that to sata ahci and then the um startup settings were available to get into safe mode so yeah the, the challenges were you know reading that tedious bit locker key uh walking the user to how to get into safe mode a as you recall back in the windows 7 days it used to be just F8 on every computer would get you into safe mode. Now it's, it's different there. You know, there's some, even within the same manufacturer Dell, there's some computers that you have to go to F12 and then you have to go into the Dell recovery. And then, then you have to select windows uh, recovery. So it's, 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 it's such a mess. And um uh, I had the issue on my own computer. So, you know, it's one of those situations where they tell you when you're on your plane, put the mask on yourself. So yeah. I had to fix my own computer first before right. I helped any people. Luckily, I wasn't hit as much as most people because my office, there's maybe half a dozen people uh, in there and then um, in there in a, in a given day, either, you know, half a dozen to a dozen on a busy day. Um, but yeah, with all the remote users, it's 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 quite a challenge. So yeah, I'm I'm willing to answer any questions you may have. Okay, so I've got I'm showing that solution or that fix right here. Boot Windows Safe Mode or Windows Recovery Environment. Navigate to Windows System 32 Drivers CrowdStrike Directory. Locate the matching file D hyphen zeros twenty nine asterisk sys and delete it. Boot the host normally, but there were complications to even get to that getting to that point as you described. Is this the basic solution though, once you get to the right place that you guys used? Correct. Okay. Now something that occurred to me as soon as I saw this, that I thought, well, now wait a minute. There's uh there's hackers out there, black hat people are gonna be trying to reverse engineer that and figure out what is being deleted there. That sounded like taking a machete to to fix a problem rather than a surgical knife, what a massive amount of stuff are they deleting there and what vulner other vulnerabilities might be present just by deleting that entire .sys file. Now, maybe that .sys file was only 
only thing it did was to cause that that problem, but that seems unlikely to me that it was probably there for some other purpose that now a vulnerability. Any thoughts along those lines from your side? I mean, yeah, right now we need CrowdStrike to um, be transparent. Uh, you know, yeah, there's there's many people with the theory that, you know, this wasn't just a simple um, update uh, mess up, you know, with code. It, it, you know, it may have been something malicious, but uh, yeah, they, they need to come out soon and be transparent on that. <laughs> That's for sure. Now, another thing that I was suspecting that we might find out is that this did not affect all computers configured with CrowdStrike, but rather computers that had some kind of common configuration that caused the, the complication. If it affected all CrowdStrike computers, that would imply that they didn't even do any in-office testing before sending it out. Do you have any awareness that this did or did not affect all CrowdStrike config configured computers. Now for you, your office, your enterprise, it may have affected all of yours. That doesn't mean it affected all CrowdStrike installed computers across the world. Your office right. all have some kind of common configurations. So yeah, it didn't affect all users. Um, in my case, my computer was left on. So I, I believe, um, some users, you know, they they turn off their computer and they take it home. I I, th I think uh, some of the users that weren't affected, they probably had their computers off during the time um, that that was up. That update went out, so that would not right. really be a response to my question. I'm thinking it sure. should be Sorry. true that there's computers out there that were on at the time of the update, but the update did not trigger the symptom for them because they don't have what other whatever other configuration is present. CrowdStrike didn't foresee as being a problem. That would make sense and be somewhat tolerable, excusable. If it affected every computer out there that was on at the time of the update, then that's that's really bad. Right. <laughs> so I'm going to take it, I'm going to read between the lines there and say that you have not heard about other CrowdStrike installed computers across the world that were not infected, not affected. They were not affected, even though they were on at the time. Um, well, I, I should I should add, um, my company uh, uses Intune, and you know what used to be Azure um, uh, AD. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we have a very unique setup. We have about five different domains, and 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 yeah, we have three main technicians. Uh, I'm one of them that are spread across the country. So yeah, we have we have mostly Dell computers, um, but you know some of them are set up differently. There there are some older ones that aren't in Intune, um, you know. So it's it's it's. It's very hard for me to give you like you know what's the common thread right. or or why were some users not af affected. Um, all I know is that you know some of them um, you know may have had their computer off. That's just a, a theory without you know talking to all of them. But right. uh, yeah, we have a very un unique setup. Uh, obviously, um, Mac users weren't affected because we do have some Mac users that have CrowdStrike and um, are are connected to. Uh, Intune, Microsoft Intune, but uh, yeah, right, right now, I, I yeah, I don't have any answer on, you know, like I said, right. the. And is it possible that even within your enterprise, there was some computers that were on at the time of the update and have CrowdStrike installed, but have some other dissimilar configuration that were not affected, and those would not have stood out to you because. They had no reason to tell you that. Correct. I, I would I would agree with could, that. Could be the case, and you wouldn't know about it without doing a massive, you know, survey, mm -hmm. as we all like surveys. Yeah. Some. Yeah, we, we we were told we were supposed to call some of the VIPs, you know, like the um, uh, uh, some of the people in charge of the the money and transferring that the you know the um, 
payroll, that kind of thing. We we were calling some VIPs and asking them, hey, are you affected by this and that kind of thing? And uh, fortunately, one of the, you know, the VIPs that's in charge of the money, they, they weren't af affected. So uh, we're going to find some more people um, uh, come Monday, probably, because, you know, many people take uh, Fridays off or might be out on vacation. So right. Um, and the other thing that was affect it was affecting a lot of different systems. It wasn't just the computers, our um our uh, uh our HR payroll system was down, so you couldn't clock in. Uh it affected my location. Our um some of our network equipment is in a data center, so I had to use the guest Wi-Fi. The guest Wi-Fi was up, but our 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 corporate Wi-Fi and corporate uh wired LAN was down. Wow. All right. Let me say hello to some of the other people here. Thank you so much to Costanza the Mage for coming on the show this morning and telling of his stories about recovering from the CrowdStrike incident. As I was editing this video to extract his portion of this morning's show, something else occurred to me. The CEO came on very early claiming that it was their update that caused this problem and it was not a cyber attack. It seems to me that it's too early to be declaring that. We have seen supply chain attacks where they are among the type of company that would be a prime target for a supply chain attack where the attacker is trying to infect the software that this company produces and get it out into the hands of their users. It's highly unlikely in my mind that they would have sent out this update without doing an in-house testing. So many machines were affected by this that now I have an alternative idea that perhaps the reason why they didn't detect it within their testing facility is because the bug may have been designed to detect what the originating public IP address is, for instance, and not activate until it finds itself in operation on a computer that has a different public IP address. So that would be a way that their in-house testing would not have caught the problem. Yes, it was a bug in their update, but who introduced the bug? So it's possible behind closed doors, technicians that are investigating this may already know the answer. It's likely going to take a while before the answer is released to us, assuming it eventually is. And I think that it will be because there's high pressure on them to, to the industry at large to come clean with how this actually happened. So it still could be, still could wind up being declared to be a supply chain attack. So once again, thank you to Costanza the Mage and have a great day, everybody. Goodbye.